should the NHS pay for mental health MOTs? That's what the Lib Dems are suggesting. The party reckons that regular health checks should be offered at key points in people's lives when they are the most vulnerable. This is including new parents, young people, men in their 40s, carers and retirees. And they want a £70 million funding boost for the NHS in their talking therapies over the next five in the over the next five years of Parliament. Do we think this is a good idea? Is it a good use of money? 0207 862 is the number to give us a ring. Lynn, I'm going to start with you. Mental health has obviously made the headlines for a number of years now. It's a real focus. So maybe this is where we should be putting the money. I think mental health is really important to consider. Uh, however, I get so frustrated when I hear this constant request of funding for the NHS when they have received record amounts of funding. And we can see now in terms of we're already being taxed to the hill. It's the highest tax we've had in 70 years. And I think the Lib Dems have done this as a fluffy headline grabber. What I would like to see alternatively is uh, businesses provide providing possible uh, therapy to their empl uh, employees mm. and do it from that point of view because if people are feeling ill, mentally ill, they will have loss of revenue. So place it on the businesses as opposed to more funding for the NHS. I suppose my query about this policy would be how how much does therapy work when you are putting it on someone rather than them coming to look for you? So this would be done at certain times in people's lives mm -hmm. when maybe they don't really need it, maybe they don't really want it. And even if they do need it, they're maybe going to mask some of their symptoms because they don't want people to know. I just don't know how efficiently a scheme like this could work. So the way I think about it is about regular and little often checkups beat a big grand once every 10 years checkup. Over the weekend, I was in uh, New York actually hosting a dating event. When I, was oh, walking, okay. yeah, when I was walking through New York, the streets set like there were hundreds of people that are walking around saying weird things, doing strange things. And these are people clearly that have been let down by the poor American healthcare system with significant mental health problems. And I think for mental health, there's like a moral and economic imperative. Moral because it's such a shame that we live in 21st century Britain or America or in the world where people, because of mental health issues, can't contribute towards their families, communities and society. But secondly, economically, even if you're like someone that thinks, oh, I don't care about morality, the economics of it, like, so one in four people experience a mental health problem um, of some kind in each year in England. And that leads to, I think, 2.8 million people economically inactive as of February. Do you not think we're over-diagnosing, though? I feel like we're over-diagnosing a lot of the mental health. So say, for example, depression is a serious issue, but there are so many different things now where I constantly hear, just in normal conversations, oh, yeah, it's, it's my depression, it's my ADHD, it's my this, it's my that. And I'm not saying they are not real issues, but I feel that the threshold for people deciding on whether they have so depression is far lower than actually building a society that's resilient, strong, mm. with a can-do attitude. So that's interesting. And what you're talking about there is people self-diagnosing that. I wonder whether that's actually an argument for these checkups. Because if you go into a therapist's room and you say, I think I have depression, and the therapist says, what are your symptoms? The therapist then can rebut or, 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 or say, you absolutely don't have depression because you're here, your hair's brushed, your teeth are brushed. You know, other symptoms that will disprove their theory about themselves. And then they can discuss why they feel that way and ways of managing it. So it may actually help that that sort of thing of us self-diagnosing now? Well, we've seen far more people go into therapy, um, even those that are not doctors now can be therapists. And I think this actually encourages their business, if I'm honest with you. There are cases where people have said, well, I actually didn't have that level of depression, but to keep me coming back to the therapist, they continuously said I was ill, I needed therapy. Mm. So I think there's also a capitalist stance on therapists constantly misdiagnosing people as well. Well, I'm not sure. I think that would be against the, the rules of mm. therapy. But I would love to hear from a therapist if you're out there uh, watching. Please do call in. Do you think that this is a good policy? Do you think this would work in our society? We'll go to the calls now. Naomi from London. What do you think when you hear the Lib Dems say that they'd like us all to get a, a, a mental health MOT? I get stressed out putting my car in for an MOT. I can't imagine how stressed out I'd be going for a mental health MOT for myself. Hello, good morning. Um, thank you for having me on, firstly. Um, I mean, in theory, the MOT idea sounds great, but, you know, you've just been discussing, you know, scarce resources. 
you know, we have huge waiting lists. We have people sitting at A&E 15 hours, okay, to be seen. And we're talking about spending money re-diverting NHS resources, which we know are very, very limited and scarce, you know, for MOTs. When you've got elderly people waiting for, you know, hip replacement operations and knee operations and, you know, paediatrics are, you know, are needing yeah. more money but, um, to provide care and treatment. Well, but, but this, would be, this would be 70 million of new funding. They're, they're allegedly paying for that by cracking down on, on sort of tax fraud and that sort of thing. Well, if, if there's 70 million of new funding, why are they not being able to fund the NHS properly or be able to give the pay increases to the doctors where they say there's no money? So where is the 70 million suddenly of new funding coming up from? It's, it's absurd. You've got people waiting at A&E on the floor for 15 mm. hours because there aren't enough doctors, there aren't enough nurses, there aren't enough beds and so on. But suddenly we've got a £70 million uh, pound pot for mental health. And it is, I'm, not, I'm not denigrating the mental health services. I think they're brilliant in this country. And if you have a mental health episode, you can go to your, your GP, you can go to A&E, and you will be seen. So, you know, there are services in place. There are, there are also, don't. Naomi, there are also very long waiting lists to see a, a therapist on, on the NHS. And so that will have to be looked at. Obviously, you can't be giving someone an, an, a, a mental health MOT. You have severe anxiety, but oh, we've got nobody for you to speak to. That wouldn't function either. Do you work for the NHS, Naomi? You seem to know an awful lot about it. I work part time, actually, yes, um, in, in the NHS. So I do see it from that point of view. But... Um, but that's not necessarily why I hold the opinion, because we do deal with a lot of mental health patients um, and, you know, they receive a very, very good care. There is a waiting list, so, you know, to, for further treatment, for, for talk therapy, yeah. for, young, for young adults, uh, for example. Um, but I also see the hundreds of other patients that, you know, come in with really serious health issues. And, you know, are having to wait in the, in, in the waiting room for hours on end to be seen. You know, and who who can't get GP appointments, who can't get dental appointments, and so they end up coming to to A and E and to the hospital, you know, for care. It's just that I I just think there is there is a limited pot of money, and I think it has to be used carefully and wisely. There might be and other I think, priorities. You know, Naomi, Absolutely. thank you Absolutely. very much for your call and your insight there working for the NHS 0207 862 we'll get back to the calls in just a moment I just wanted to read a couple of messages that are coming in online, Carol on Facebook says our local health authority already do these, I've had two since I moved there after my husband died suddenly it helped me a lot as it pointed me to the help that I needed they're a great idea, wow I didn't realise they were doing them already and fantastic that it's, that it's helped you Carol uh, David on Facebook says I think that's actually a brilliant idea however they are going to have to pump serious amounts of money and resources into our mental health services which have been cut to the bone I mean it goes back to the comment Naomi was making about the scarcity of resources already on the NHS so uh, there's lots to be funded Gary from Kent what's your view when it comes to a mental health MOT um, I think it's a very, I think it's a very good idea. But um, mental health services in this country is is just woefully lacking. It's woeful. I worked in Germany for ten years, and I had an episode of depression while I was over there. And within three weeks, I was seeing a therapist, and within another week, I was seeing a psychiatrist. Wow. Yes, yes, I had to, I had to pay for it through an insurance scheme. But to be quite honest. At the end of the day, when when you've got mental health problems, yeah, um, you will pay anything. And Gary, can I ask? Uh, well, I, I mean, that brings in the discussion as to whether you start paying for the NHS, which I don't want to get into just now. But how long after you started uh, seeing a psychiatrist did you did you overcome the depression? I know it's quite hard to gauge the exact day. You don't just wake up one day and go, "Oh, I'm cured." But how long, roughly, do you think that, that it took for you to get back to some kind of normal? Well, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder um, within um, three sessions with the psychiatrist, and. In the UK, I've had this problem for probably 20 years and nothing was diagnosed mm. at all. And now has I'm it, on the right, has it now I'm on the right medication, um, I, I can lead a, a, a reasonably normal life and I know what the triggers are and everything. In, in Britain, unfortunately, there are thousands and thousands of people that literally are being failed by the mental health service. OK, Gary, that may be true. Thank you very much for your call. Nathan from Cheshire. 
What do you think about a mental health MOT? Um, I'm torn. Don't forget, Lib Dems had no, um, no, no fees for tuitions. Uh, OK, we're going back to that. So what, you don't believe that you think yeah. this is pie in the sky then? I, I, think, I think it's a thing, <laughs> yeah. OK, but let's say it's not, and let's say they okay. get in uh, the next election. We're, we're, you know, imagining quite a lot here. Do you think an M a mental health MOT is a good idea? I think CMHT crisis teams uh, are probably better to be rebuilt because th th those have gone down the uh, down the pan. So I think the the infrastructure was there, and it needs to be rebuilt from there. Okay, so the infrastructure was there. Do you think that it's not there now because of a lack of funding or an increase in demand on it? Because there does feel Both. like either more people are aware of their own mental health or there has been an increase in mental health difficulties in the last, let's say, 10 years. Well, don't forget, we've had, there's a generation growing with only war. So, you know, Iraq and so on. What was that? Sorry, oh, there's lots of people coming back from war. There are people. I mean, I, I've grown up with war in my life because I was born on the 15th of May. So I've only ever known the Gaza conflict oh, on my David. birthday. And so, have you it, have you got personal experience with this? Have you struggled with your mental health since then? I've, I've struggled with my mental health all my life, basically. But um, interventions occurred when I was a teenager, and then later on, and now classes are having complex mental health problems. And do you think the NHS were good at handling your your problems? Um, I have to be honest. Um, it's patchy. Patchy. Uh, yeah. Probably. I mean, don't forget, a psychiatrist can only prescribe medication. It's the psychologist that's uh, needed, and psychologists are thin on the ground. Well, that's part of the problems with this policy, isn't it? That actually, even if you do give everyone a, a mental health MOT, you're going to discover a lot more issues than perhaps you would have before, naturally, if you're looking into people like that. But then who's going to be there to solve the problems? Nathan, thank you for your call. Uh, Kerry from London, what's your thoughts on a mental health MOT? Do you think this is something that we need to invest in? It might be more than 70 million, I suspect it would be. I think that um, the NHS needs to invest in the people that actually have a mental health diagnosis. Mm. Um, I was diagnosed with a borderline personality disorder uh, when I was 28. I'm 36 and I still get no help. Can I ask how you were diagnosed? Because part of this process, part of this MOT would be to pick up uh, cases like yourself quicker and uh, before yeah. there's any serious symptoms might develop or before there's okay, any well, suicidal um, thoughts. So I, I've, been, I've been suicidal since I was 11 on and off. Okay. Um, and then I got sent to a counsellor uh, through my GP and my counsellor said that they wouldn't be able to help me because I need secondary therapy. Okay. Um, I was back and forth uh, to the mental health service for two years until I got a diagnosis. I had to see three different doctors. I was originally diagnosed with bipolar. Okay. Uh, the other doctor disagreed and said I didn't have bipolar, but I was originally put on bipolar medication and I got more suicidal, um, got taken off that medication. Then I got diagnosed with my borderline personality disorder. Yeah. Um, I was sent to therapy, short-term therapy, um, which was only for six months. And then after that, I had to do a secondary therapy and I'm still waiting. Kerry, I mean, I, first of all, I'm, I'm sorry that you've had to go through all that sort of experience, but you're bringing something to light here. And thank you for your call, because that's 17 years from suicidal thoughts to getting a diagnosis that seems to fit Kerry and she's still struggling to get the, the help that she needs. I mean, that's somebody that's already... It, 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 within the NHS's mental health um, structure. She makes a good point. How, how are we going to cope with the impact of more people like Kerry being put onto the, into the system? The thing is, of course, like, it will put a strain on resources. But again, my experience in New York this weekend shows if we ignore the issue and say it doesn't need funding, we'll end up like America, where there's New York, San Francisco, where there are 
thousands of people on the street who are homeless, who've got mental health issues, and that impacts their families. So I think it's one of those things where it will cost money, but politics is all about choices and allocation of economic resources. And if we're to allocate our tight economic resources, I think mental health is an incredibly important thing to allocate it towards. Okay, well, thank you very much for all your calls on that.